All right, in this video, I'm going to um, start a discussion on probability theory um, by going through some basic definitions that you'll come across when you're studying probability theory. All right, so starting with um, random experiment. All right, so a random experiment in probability theory, when we um, use this term, what we're, what we're referring to is a situation where the um, possible outcomes of that situation, so possible outcomes are known, okay, um, though which outcome actually occurs, so which outcome occurs is unknown. Okay, the outcome that actually occurs is random, right? So, for example, we could be rolling a die, okay? That is a random experiment, right? We know the uh, possible outcomes. The possible outcomes are on a six-sided die. So when I say die, I'm referring to a six-sided die. The possible outcomes are one to six. But, of course, we don't know what outcome will actually occur until we've rolled the die, okay? All right, next definition that we need to discuss is a sample space. Sample space. This is the collection of possible outcomes, okay? So a collection or um, set, right? We're going to use set uh, notation here soon. So a collection or set of all possible outcomes. Right? So if you were to once again um, roll that die, um, for example, right, uh, our sample space which notation-wise, a lot of times we, we will write like this S, a capital S, and the way we mark it as a capital S is we put these little dash marks on the ends of it. Um, so the sample space is like one, two, three, four, five, or six. Right, if you roll the die, those are all of your possible outcomes. Okay, so notation for sample space um, commonly, I will use this like capital S, right? Uh, other notations that you may see are omega. Oh, that was a really bad omega. Let me draw that again. Um, and also I've seen like a capital or cursive C. Okay. That's a C. All right. Um, next. We have elements, element or points, okay? Uh, same thing, you might see it referred to as either way. Um, this is one possible outcome. One possible outcome, all right? So, um, for example, um, if you were to uh, roll a die, then one possible outcome may be S equals two. Say you rolled a two, okay? So notation-wise, you will see um, elements often referred to as um, like a lowercase s. So this is a small s. Um, or you will see it referred to as, uh, let's see what else, a lowercase c. I've seen it that way as well. Okay, so cursive C, then lowercase c. Um, one thing I want to point out is we need to um, note that this S, this element, is a member of the sample space. Okay, so I can't roll a seven, right? It needs to be a member of the sample space. Okay, just as a reminder, this, this guy means a member of, is a member 
of, right? And you're going to see this mathematical shorthand quite a lot in probability theory, so you need to kind of keep these guys in mind, okay? All right, next we have event. Event. This is a collection of elements. A collection of elements, right? So, um, for example, for example, you may see us say um, if event A is um, that an even number even number was rolled, then, and then we'd go ahead and give what A is. A would be, let's see, two, four, or six, right? Those are all the even numbers on your die. Okay, so notation-wise, you'll often see events referred to with capital letters. Okay, so A, B, C, I also see E quite a lot, E standing for event. All right. Okay. Um, note also, I want us to note, before we move on from event, that um, A, right, so a, an event is a subset of the sample space, okay? So this, wants to, this is another shorthand mathematical notation that you guys can keep in mind. This, um, this sideways U means subset. Okay. All right, and, that, and what that means is that A is contained in S, right? These elements are in S. So let me go and write that down. A is contained... contained in the sample space. Contained in. Okay, so contained in. And so kind of the sideways U kind of points to the thing that you're contained in, right? Because you can write this the other way around. Uh, you can write this like this, right? And in this scenario, uh, instead of it being a subset, this is called a um, subset, right? And it's just it's just the other way around, okay? So it's kind of like it eats the bigger thing. This the sideways U eats the bigger thing, okay? All right. Um, let's go ahead and do another example. So uh, with with subsets, because actually this is an important thing that we need to be thinking about. So. Um, Another example, so if event B is um, that a number more than uh, one is rolled, more than one is rolled, okay, then what's B? If it's more than one, then you could roll a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Okay, and so let's think about, remember we also have A, A is an even number, right? So that's a two, a four, and a six. All right, notice that um, these numbers in A, all of the numbers showing up in A are contained in B, okay? so. A is contained in B. A is a subset of B, right? Okay, and you could write this as B is a subset of A. Same thing. Okay, because these numbers in A are contained in B. All right. All right. One last uh, definition that I want to talk about here in this um, this first video is the null set. Okay, the null set. This is also called the empty set, right? And notation-wise, 
you will see this written as uh, an O with a with a line through it. Or sometimes you'll see it written as like a using set set curly brackets, but then there's nothing in between. All right. So an example of a null set, uh, say if event C is that um, a number more than six is rolled, right? So um, if a number more than six is rolled, then C would be the empty set, okay? There's nothing, because you basically, you can't roll a number more than six, so C then would just be the empty set, right? Okay. 